Okay then gang, so I want to move away from the mini project that we've been creating in this series now just to show you a couple of extra features that TypeScript gives to us. So I'm going to start with something called generics. Now generics in TypeScript are a feature which I think caused a little bit of confusion at first, so I'm going to try and keep it simple and explain it in a logical way. So generics allow us to create reusable blocks of code which can be used with different types. Now that sounds like a load of gibberish, so let's do an example and hopefully that will help explain. So imagine that we want a function which takes in some kind of object, any kind of object, doesn't matter what the properties are, and it returns a new object based on the old one, but with also a random ID property attached to it as well. I've already done that. I've created this function called add UID. It takes in an object as a parameter. It has to be an object, but it doesn't matter what properties are on the object. And then inside we create a UID variable, which is a random number. And then we return a new object along with all of the original properties destructured from the object that we send in and the new UID property as well. So it spits out a new object based on the one we pass in with a random UID attached to it as well. So what I've done is created a variable called doc1 and I've invoked this and I've passed in an object with these two properties, name and age, and then I'm logging this out to the console. So when I do this, hopefully we'll have a random ID attached to it as well. So if I save that and come over here, we can see Yoshi is 40, 84. If I refresh, hopefully we'll get a different UID and we do and again and so forth. So this generates a random ID for us and attaches it to the object which it then returns. Now this is fine, we're getting this object and it's working correctly, but there is one problem. If I try to access a property on this doc1 like the name, which I should be able to do, we get an error. And that's because it says property name does not exist on this type with a UID property. Now why is that? Well, it's because when we pass in an object into this function right here, we're not specifying exactly what this object should be, right? And it doesn't know when it returns this new object right here, what properties were on the object that we passed in. So it doesn't know that a name exists on the object or that an age exists on the object because we've not said that anywhere and it's not captured those inside the function. So when it returns this, it doesn't know what properties it's going to output right here. So when we get doc1, which is returned from that function, then it doesn't know about name, it doesn't know about age. Now, we can combat this by using a generic. Now, the way we do this is typically by placing angle brackets and then a big T in front of the function. Now, this can be anything, but typically you're going to see T. That's the letter that people normally use. And then instead of saying object right here is the type, we're going to say T. So what this does is capture whatever item we pass in to the function and it captures what properties are going to be on it if it's an object. And so when we return it, then it's going to know what properties are on that object. I hope that makes sense. So now that error goes and if I delete this where it says name and try to access something else like the age, it knows about it as well as the UID. So we capture all of that information when we pass an object in now. Now this is fine, but now we're not specifying that this type right here that we pass in has to actually be an object. We're just capturing whatever that type is and we're capturing the specifics of that type. And by that, I mean, if it's an object, what properties are on it, but we're not saying it has to be an object anymore. So I could say, for example, let doc2 equal to add UID and then pass in, for example, a string. Now, that makes no sense because we don't want to be able to attach a random ID to something like this, but we're allowed to do it because we've not specified that we only want to pass in objects. So we can get around this by saying inside this T that it extends, for example, not in capitals, extends object. So now we're saying whatever is passed in, this type must extend this object. So it must be basically an object. And now this doesn't work. We get an error because this isn't an object. Okay. Now, if you wanted to, you could even get more specific and you could say that this must extend a specific type of object. For example, an object which has a name property. So I could do curly braces and then name, which is a string. And now it's only going to allow in objects which have a name property. 
and that name has to be a string. So this is fine because it has a name property, but if I delete this or if I make this a number, then it's not going to be allowed. And if I delete this altogether, then it's not going to let us pass this in because we've been quite specific as to what type we want to be able to pass in. And again, we can access now, oops, let me change this back to a string. We can access all of the properties originally passed in with this object. So that works. Okay then, so I wanna show you another way we can use generics and that is with interfaces. So down here, let me just uncomment this. We have this interface called resource. I remember an interface defines how an object should look. So if an object implements this resource interface, it must have a UID property, which is number. It must have a resource name, which is a string. And the resource name could be something like user, or it could be something like hobbies, if the resource is a list of hobbies, etc. Okay. Now this data property must also be present, but we want to make this flexible. We don't want to say that data must be a string because data might not be a string. It could be an object that we want this resource to be. It could be an array. It could be something else. So we want to make this generic. And the way we can do that is by passing again into this the type in angle brackets. And down here, we're going to say that the data is going to be whatever type that we specify when we create an object which implements this resource. OK. So let me just roll back for a second. If, for example, I say that this must be object, right? And over here, this must be taken away. And now we're saying that if we implement this resource interface, the data must be an object. Now, if I try to say something like this, const, and um, we'll call this doc3, and it's gonna be a resource. So we're giving it a type here, resource, and we're gonna set it equal to an object, right? Because at the end of the day, this defines the structure of an object. Now the UID is gonna be a number, so I'll say one, and the resource name is gonna be person. So that's the name for the data. And then the data itself has to be an object. So it will be an object like so. And we'll say right here that it's gonna have a name property which is Sean. Okay, so this is absolutely fine. We don't get any errors right here. But what if this data property instead was something else like a string? Well, now we get an error because data has to be an object. So this is where the generics come into play. Instead, I'm going to say that we're going to pass in the type when we define a resource object. And this down here is going to be of type T, whatever we pass in. So now right here, I can say that I want this to be of type string, this resource. And now it's fine because it's saying, OK, well, pass in the string as T and then data must be of that type string, right? Which it is. So now if I change this back to an object and add on the name property, which is Sean, then we get an error because now this isn't a string. And we're saying that the resource type here is going to be a string. And that's what the data is. And the data right here is an object. So I could change this back to object and everything would be hunky-dory again. So let's do one more example. I'm going to say const doc4 is going to be a resource again. It's going to implement that interface. And this time it's going to be string array. So this time when we define the data property, it must be a string array. So let's try this. I'm going to say the UID is going to be two and I'm going to say the resource name this time will be shopping list and now i'm getting an error that's because i've forgotten my equal sign right there and then finally we need the data property and that must be an array of strings now if i try something just like a string then we get an error under data but if i make this into an array which has strings inside it for example bread and milk and toilet roll then now it works, okay? So finally, let's just log this to the console. We'll say doc3 and doc4 to make sure that those are created. Save it and refresh, and we can see now we get all of these things logged, okay? So that is the power of generics.